Welcome back to State of the Nation. It is with deep sadness that I heard the reports of the death of Mike Lynch and his daughter. He was a bold, upright and modest man, desperately wronged by the American justice system. And that he and his teenage daughter should reportedly have died while celebrating that justice was finally done is unutterably miserable for his family and those who knew him. Pray for the repose of his soul and that of his daughter. Mr Lynch was the victim of an injustice caused by our extradition agreement with the United States. In 2023, after years of battling through the courts, Mike Lynch was extradited to America on criminal fraud charges where a court ordered him to pay a $100 million bond with 24-hour armed guards ensuring he did not flee the country. In 2011, he sold his software company, Autonomy, to Hewlett-Packard for £11 billion. He was subsequently accused of illegally inflating the value of the firm, but he had done nothing wrong. Merely Hewlett-Packard had bungled the deal, ran the company badly, and with hindsight thought it had paid too much. Mr Lynch was acquitted of all charges on the 7th of June in a trial in San Francisco. It was within this context that I met him when he came to discuss his case last year. And what his case pointed to was an absurd asymmetry in our extradition agreement with the United States and a risk of double jeopardy, as the UK regulators had already concluded that he was innocent. It stems from the 2003 treaty with the United States designed to streamline the process of extradition but it seems to operate against the interests of innocent Britons. Lest we forget the case of Harry Dunn, a 19-year-old British man who died in 2019 following a road traffic accident. The car that killed him was being driven on the wrong side of the road by an American spy, Anna Sekoulis. She was whipped out of the country and a diplomatic row unfolded as the Americans refused to extradite Agent Sekoulis. But as my next guest, Sir David Davis, pointed out at the time of Mike Lynch's acquittal, any sale to an American company is plainly seen by the American Department of Justice to fall under American rules and regulations, no matter where in the world it is. He went on to say that he would be very cautious of any deal if he were a British tech entrepreneur, because he would never know that five or ten years later he wasn't going to be carted off to America to face a partisan case in a partisan course, court. We must stop being so subservient to the United States on these matters. It is the duty of the British state to protect its citizens. But the case of Mike Lynch represented an abandonment of that principle. The special relationship does not mean we blindly follow orders from our American overlords, but rather we should stand up for our interests as the US does for its, especially when justice is at stake, as it was in the case of Mike Lynch. As ever, let me know your views via mailmog at gbnews.com. But with me now is Conservative MP for Goul and Pocklington and a friend of Mike Lynch, Sir David Davis. Um, David, thank you so much for joining me. First of all, this is obviously the saddest set of reports that we're getting. Yeah, it's awful. I mean, uh, Mike was very proud of his daughter, Hannah, who just passed her A-levels to go to Oxford. And she also died with him. So, I mean, it, it, for the family, it, it could, could not be worse, frankly. It could not be more horrible. Um, but you're right in what you said. Uh, they were celebrating uh, the end, what they thought was going to be the end of a long injustice, a, a 12-year injustice in which Mike was dragged through the courts time and time again uh, who, when he uh, had to defend his good name. Um, even though, I mean, you didn't mention that, that when when autonomy was bought, it was actually quoted on the London Stock Exchange. So everybody was involved in the valuation of this, uh, not just Mike. And Mike didn't put it up for sale. The uh, Hewlett Packard came along. That's a very important point because autonomy had an open public valuation. It was a publicly traded company, and yep. effectively, Hewlett Packard did a deal it didn't like, and a few years later, went after one of the principals. Well, that's right. In fact, what happened between the, the purchase of autonomy and the change of mind, there was a complete change of management at, uh, at uh, Hewlett-Packard. Uh, they, they threw out the old management and brought in new ones. And the new one, uh, well, I won't name the individuals, but they uh, wanted to make their name uh, rebuilding uh, Hewlett-Packard. So you know, what happened was basically British justice got ensnared 
in American politics, American commercial politics. And it's not for the first time. I and mean, this, this happened a number of times. I mean, there was uh, what was known as the NatWest Five. Uh, there was um, uh, a man called uh, Mike Tapper on another occasion. But in each case, when these people are dragged off to America, what happens is they fall under the American plea bargaining system. And in essence, they are threatened. They're told, if you plead not guilty and you lose, you'll go to prison for 25 or 30 years in a high security prison. You'll probably never see your family again, or almost never see your family again. Or you can plead guilty and we'll do a deal for two or three years in an open prison. Maybe the second half it's served back in Britain and so on. So most people faced with this prospect will give in. And really, really unusually, Mike didn't. Mike was incredibly brave. He basically said, I'm not going to fold in front of this blackmail uh, and I'm going to fight it. And only a small percentage, one or two percent of people who resist uh, American court cases um, are exonerated. You know, the vast majority are, are, are found guilty one way or another. And, and he fought that off. And, and he was very lucky. He got a good jury, as he said himself. He got a good, honest jury who saw through the facts and exonerated him on all counts. There wasn't, there wasn't any halfway, half, halfway measure about it. On all counts, he was exonerated. Um, so you're right. This is a terrible thing to put a British citizen through. Absolutely terrible thing. And it, it doesn't amount to no, justice. There's at all. no protection. That in a normal extradition, historically, you had the protection of a requirement for a prima facie case to be made. Yeah. But now the yeah. Americans just come along and ask for extradition and it goes ahead. So British people are subject to the risk of foreign justice without the protections that they would get in the UK courts. And this seems to me to be completely unreasonable. Well, that's quite right. And, and the reason it was done in the first place, back in 2003, remember, this was just after 9-11. And so Blair was trying to be, uh, to bend over backwards, to be supportive to George Bush, I guess, at the time, and, uh, and conceded all these uh, arrangements whereby you didn't have to prove a prima facie case. And that means, I mean, we've had hundreds of Brits um, and very, very few of them, I think only about a dozen of them, have actually been uh, terrorism cases. The vast majority have been commercial cases of one sort or another, rather like this one. Uh, and so what's happened is that uh, British law has become a sort of outbuilding of American commercial policy. Uh, uh, and you know, the, American, the American legal system is very politicised anyway. You have elected district attorneys and things like that. And, and it, you know, in, in California, Hewlett Packard's a local company. You know, who, who, you know it, 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 it's, it's actually a miracle that... that uh, a a that, local company uh, against a foreigner who is, is coming forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and uh, the US has a concept of extraterritorial justice, which the UK yeah. doesn't. It's only in very unusual circumstances that UK law applies outside the UK. But the US takes a much more aggressive um, a position, a, a more arrogant position, you might say, that um, US law applies even if you've obeyed the law of your home country. Yeah, but there's no reason for, that, that we have to, to follow that. I mean, we, we've decided to in, this, in these cases, but the French don't. Um, uh, plenty of European countries have constitutional rights for their own, for their own citizens that protect them. Just incidentally, in reverse, uh, the Americans have constitutional rights. You mentioned the Sekula, the, the Sekula's case, the lady who uh, we believe was a spy for the for the American government uh, who ran down uh, Mr. Dunn. Um, she was she was held back uh, under her constitutional rights, and that was that. Well, nothing we could do about it. Well. Shouldn't, shouldn't British citizens have constitutional rights too, like a right to a fair trial, uh, a right to a presumption of innocence? I mean, remember the other thing about American court cases. Um, they, they, they often start with a so-called perp walk, where the, the uh, accused person is dressed up in an orange suit, shackled hand and foot, and then walked to the 
walk to the court so that all the TV cameras can catch them, just to present them as 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 guilty rather than innocent. The exact opposite of what we presume in our legal system. So you're dead right. We need to get a grip of this. Now, Mike, when he'd won his case, almost the first thing he did was ring me up and say, we're going to have to defeat this treaty. We're going to have to overcome this treaty and get it changed for the better. So I'm afraid I view it as a sort of duty of care to his memory, really, that I'm going to uh, actually maintain that campaign. To, uh, to, to get it to get it D- David, I think that's an absolutely noble attitude to take. I think that's really important. We need to learn from this and protect other British citizens and, in Mike's memory, um, ensure that British citizens are protected. Thank you so much.